as detailed as we are, like all Ryan knows, it's inevitable that there are things we wish we had done or not done, especially after living here in the past 10 months. So in today's episode, we'll run through our top 20 Renault regrets. This is perhaps one of our most important episodes ever, so watch till the end. Planning for your home Renault and wanting to look for an ID but not sure where to begin? Home Trust can help you with that. On the main page, simply click on Get Recommendations and complete a few simple questions. Firstly, select a team you are going for and some of the key design features you are interested to include in your new home. Next, submit details like the floor area and your budget. Finally, complete your contact information. Home Trust will match with you with 3 to 5 shortlisted IDs based on your preferences and requirements. It's that simple. Visit hometrust.sg now. Singaporeans love our 5 C's, so we also came up with our own 5 C's to bucket our regrets. In order starting from the least important category, we have cosmetics related, cost related, comfort related, convenience related, and finally cleanliness related regrets being the most important category to us. Likewise, as we go down our list of regrets, you'll notice most of them start off being minor aesthetic ones such as We designed this dining banquet and it's gotten a lot of compliments from our guests. There's nothing functional we would change, but maybe something cosmetic. It would have been nice if you had thought of incorporating waterfall edges to both ends of the banquet backing. Something similar to the dresser portion of our walk-in wardrobe carpentry. This would look aesthetically pleasing and also reduce risk of having sharp edges. In a similar vein, this regret also applies to our sintered stone top skirting of all our countertops, from the bathrooms to the kitchen. Right now, they are all the usual right angle cuts. We wish we had thought of curving them as well. We seldom see this being done so it's something you can explore. We wish we were more meticulous in discussing tiling works with our ID. As tilers start tiling from one of the four corners of a room, sometimes they just stick up or sometimes they simply chose poorly. For example, in our kitchen, the tilers started tiling on 60 by 60 tiles from the corner but because those were eventually visually covered up by the motor base and carpentry, perhaps they could have started from the middle line for better symmetry. Alternatively, we could have considered topping up some money for bigger format towns like 150 by 150 ones so that they wouldn't give us these asymmetric grout lines in the middle. Moving to our master bath, tiling starts from this corner which was eventually covered up by the vanity and the top carpentry, so the nice big 60 by 60 towels are somewhat hidden. Conversely, if we take a look at the shower area, you'll notice that firstly, the wall and the floor tiles do not line up. As a general rule of thumb, they usually should align. Not sure what happened here. Secondly, because we have a shower curb, technically this presents an opportunity for a visual reset. Maybe something like this could have been done instead. Full tile, followed by truncated tile and the curb, followed by the large tile again, and ending with a truncated tile that is hidden from sight. So yes, try discussing about the tiling plan with your ID. Aside from where the tiles begin, we still regret not knowing and asking our ID about how adjacent tiles would connect. We wish we knew what mitered ages are, and we covered this in our tiling episode. Mitered ages essentially are 45 degree cuts that skilled tilers would do to connect right angled tiles. The alternative is to use the opiang rounded PVC ages like what our tiler did for us here. Just take a look at this window area in our common bathroom. All that raw, exposed cement grout. Even now when we are touching it, we couldn't tell if it's dusty or sandy or both. The same happened at our master bathroom window, but we covered up the rough cement by installing our custom retractable mosquito net over it. Another area is where the tiles meet the plaster. Just remember, not all IDs would care to talk to you about such details. We thought that trimmings would automatically be done for us. If you go to hotels or even some Mata's public toilets, you will see that these edges would be more refined with the use of metallic looking edges. So on hindsight, we wish we had done it for the entrance to the master bath, including the transition from the bedroom floor. Here's an example from one of our friends recently completed home. Their ID was very meticulous and helped arrange for these trimmings. Just take a look at how neat and tidy their corners are. So remember to bring this up during the Renault planning phase and if needed, purchase these trimmings in advance. But take note, metallic looking stuff tend to corrode or decolorize easily in high moisture environment, so remember to go for better quality products. For those of you who are not familiar, the government offers optional packages for homeowners to customize their flats. Note that these decisions are made about 6 years before your flat is ready and cannot be changed once you have decided. 
This is called the Optional Component Skin, aka the OCS Skin. For us, taking these packages actually spun off to many many other regrets. On hindsight, we would have preferred getting a bare flat for greater flexibility. Six years ago, we were poorer and had neither the time nor resources to plan our interior design needs and wants. So we just gasso take all the OCS packages, flooring, doors, and sanitary fittings, thinking that it will be more economical, but ended up wasting more money. More on that later. Anyway, eventually we decided on our home team to be modern with no wood elements. At the same time, we got hung up over the health risks associated with vinyl as shared in our hacking episode. Thus, we decided to replace all the wood design vinyl flooring that came with the OCS package for proper tiles instead, all except for one room. This is the common room that some of you realized wasn't shown in our Renault series. Yes, it is our unrenovated study room, still featuring the original wood design HDB OCS vinyl flooring and skirting, bringing us to the next point. Why never to save rental costs? Actually, with the exorbitant rental costs these days, it is increasingly common for new homeowners to choose not to renovate an entire room while also keeping the space flexible for future decisions. And we are one of those. The only things we did for the study room are the basics. Electricals, painting, installing the aircon, ceiling fan and smart motorized blinds. There are some regrets to this. Firstly, we are not a fan of vinyl flooring. In the early days when Nori is still not toilet trained, she occasionally pees on the floor, not sure if any of these pees seep underneath the flooring. We have heard horror stories that with every step, the dog pee would just spread more and more until the entire floor beneath is covered with pee. Secondly, the HDB OCS vinyl skirting did not hold up well at all. Barely a year in, the skirting and silicone is starting to fall apart. Just take a look at how hollow and wobbly it is. So yes, we most definitely should have minimally at least tiled up this room as well, just like how we did for our walk-in wardrobe and bedroom. Also, we wish we had a Murphy bed here for guests, so perhaps a wall of carpentry could be done, at the same time concealing this classic random crevice. For now, our room is still very makeshift. It's an open canvas, so a shameless plug here. We are always open to collab. Do reach out to us if you are interested to help transform this space. We knew we wanted marble gum ever since we saw and felt it at a friend's house years ago. Thankfully, our HDB OCS living area tiles look good and are actually half bodied homogeneous tiles, which means they could be marble gum. Thus, to save money from hacking and replacing, we decided to keep at marble gum these living area tiles. Remember, we changed the vinyl in the master room and one common room into tiles. And because vinyl is much thinner than tiles, what was once flush flooring now became a notch higher. The flooring is no longer leveled and required the use of these transition strips, which does not look or feel good, often trapping dirt as well. To be honest, we didn't expect this and thought that leveling all the flooring was something that our ID or toddler would have done for us automatically. To recap, this is how the HDB OCS vinyl flooring were removed. They were ripped off to reveal the cement base, which our toddler simply laid the fresh tiles over. In our simple brain, we think the original base could have been hacked and redone, so that the flooring can all be leveled. It's a pity that we did not know or ask such questions beforehand. But now you do, so don't forget to ask your ID about such deeds. Speaking about leveling issues, well, look at this toe starving size step up from our living area to the kitchen. Let's explain how this happened. Remember, unlike the optional living and bedroom flooring, the kitchen flooring is a standard issue for all flats in our project. To recap, you are legally allowed to hack the kitchen floor tiles, but in doing so, you will simply void the 5 year waterproofing warranty. We decided to keep the warranty and save costs of hacking, so we chose to overlay new tiles instead. Pre signing, we are certain our ID said he would be able to do a slope for us. But eventually it wasn't done. Anyway, this is how we live with it, using a perfect fit slope and a matte laid atop. On hindsight, we think we would rather hack away the kitchen flooring and lose the waterproofing warranty just to get it levelled with the OCS living area floor. Which brings us back to the original point of simply not taking the HDB OCS packages to begin with, because we... So our 6 years ago sales thought we could save some money with the HDB OCS packages, but we were so wrong. 
Let's take a look at what our damage was. Package 1 comprises internal doors and sanitary fittings. This includes 3 bedroom doors, 2 basins, 2 taps, 2 swing slide bathroom doors, 2 shower sets. This cost us $3,000. Package 2 comprises floor finishes. This includes towels for the living and dining area, vinyl flooring for all the bedrooms, and vinyl skirting for the entire house. This cost us 5.1k. In the end, the entire $3,000 spent on package 1 was essentially wasted because they were given away or sold at a tiny amount. In fact, we had to incur additional ID costs of dismantling and whatnot. For package 2, we removed the vinyl flooring for the master room and one bedroom. For simplicity, we estimate this loss to be valued about $2,000. So in short, some $5,000 went down the drain. Now, some of you might be curious about how the government's packages fare vis-a-vis -vis self sourced products of more reasonable quality. In place of package 1, you can expect to spend the following instead. Surprise surprise, it is actually cheaper to self-source your own package one and you can get better quality and better looking doors, basins, taps and shower sets. Those we chose are already considered above average, you can find even cheaper products. In place of package 2, extrapolating our ID fees, we estimate that it would have cost about $7,900 to tile up our entire home flooring. Essentially, it is just about $2,800 more for a fully tiled vinyl free home and most importantly, the chance to solve all the flooring hype problems we mentioned earlier. If we could turn back time, we would not have gone for package 2 as well. We love the way our cove ceiling looks but there are several issues with it. If you recall, we used a new Philips Seal Ambience Gradient Smart Light Strip which is simply plug and play, powered by a 3-pin socket. We highlighted this to our ID and plaster sales vendor and thought they would creatively embed the socket in a discrete manner along the cove but unfortunately it was not. So we ended up with these visible protrusions of sockets and coupling that with the Smart Light Strip's plug and driver, it turns out to be quite jarring. Again, don't assume that your ID will be meticulous enough to help think about all these details. We wished we had requested for this to be looked at, or at least have it begin at the other end, which is less visible. The same goes for the coves in our walk-in wardrobe, as well as our bedroom. Thankfully, for the dining cove, one of our electricians noticed it and very kindly thought of a solution for us. He helped us to cut a second down light so that he can reach in to pull the socket inside so that it can be hidden. This is one of the benefits of being on site, especially if your ID doesn't bother to. Some vendors are really very nice and helpful and have the sincerity to do their best. When it comes to the cove ceilings, there's also a literal thorn in our flesh. When we tried to lay our light strips, we got shocked to see that the cove is filled with sharp metal edges and screws flying in all directions, which not only has a risk of piercing our flesh but also damaging our expensive light strips. Yes, the Hue Ambience Gradient costs about $100 per meter. More importantly, spring cleaning is gonna be a because we can't even pull a magic clean wipe through without it getting caught by the screws and shredding up. This is something we've been trying to ask our ID and plaster seal vendor to solve, but they are reluctant to come up with a solution. Surely, with all of humanity's engineering ingenuity, there's got to be a way to smoothly plaster the innards of a cove ceiling. So, storage bit or adjustable bit? Well, we deliberated on this and eventually started on team storage, getting a city bit and storage bit base. However, after living in our home for some time, we have slowly shifted to team adjustable a bit. While the extra space is useful, right now it seems like we have too much storage in our house. With a Samsung Freestyle projector set up in our bedroom, we now kind of wish we had an adjustable bed instead of a storage bed so that we can chill a bit before sleeping. On hindsight, we have gotten the Wusa Adjustable Split King. Split is better so that we have greater flexibility. Sam is a night hour so we can comfortably read at an angle. By the way, if you are planning to get a Wusa, don't forget to use our promo code for 5% off store-wide at Wusa's official store. Yes, store-wide! So if you need affordable and quality mattresses, adjustable bed base, bed accessories and more, do check out Wusa at the link down below and use our promo code THESWAKUS for 5% off. Having a high bathroom vanity was, well, high on our list. We requested for a 90cm countertop, but not sure what happened because it ended up at 70 something cm. Remember to double confirm before you approve the carpentry drawings. Till today we still don't know what that Chinese character means. Perhaps it meant 90cm including the basin, but also not quite right. Anyway, to avoid any miscom, always check and double check. This makes a difference because every morning you could be reminded of this. If only the countertop was higher so our neck won't pain every time we brush teeth. Perhaps 95cm countertop would have been ideal for our height. 
We really regret getting these sockets because for whatever reason, it is a pain to plug and unplug devices that require a 2-pin adapter. Just take a look at this footage. Here's an old school ordinary socket in comparison, smooth and no issues. It got so bad that it even ripped off the socket on our serial panel. Yup, the plastic edges will also be disfigured with each use. You can see the rounded imprints D2 pin plugs left behind. Ideally, we wish we had universal sockets like this, but it's a little overkill and these do not come cheap. The Snyder Electric Avatar on sockets have a big switch, so it's also very sensitive, especially the double sockets. For instance, we have our new smarting station plugged in here, and from time to time when plugging in the other socket, our fat hands will accidentally turn it off. Singaporeans love our Mitsubishi Electric and Daikin aircons. Not many homeowners dare to explore the latest Panasonic Nano X aircon. We love it because of the extra air purifier feature that other brands do not offer. Unfortunately, there is something wrong with the math behind its installation because the installer failed to take into account its unique long blades, which are designed for better airflow. So this happens whenever the aircon is turned on or turned off. The blade goes all the way down, so we simply need to make sure that the door is fully opened or closed first. Thankfully, this does not affect normal use. The blades won't go all the way down and remain well above the door. This is not so much a regret actually because we love the aircon. With the arrow wings, the 24K units in the dining room can cool down the living room quickly. We still recommend the Panasonic X, but just remember to account for their long blades. Our carpentry layout is completely designed by ourselves and brought to life with the MVP of our renovation, our carpenters. They are really the best vendor that our ID used. We thought deeply to eradicate all that space in our carpentry so as to maximize space in an already tiny house. This is a small thing but there is one dead space in our house that we didn't pick up and it is in the corner of our walk-in wardrobe, right here. If we open up the bottom cabinet, you will see that the roof of the compartment ends here and does not extend above which means there is a 64 by 50 by 20 cm thickness of wasted space. Instead of this quick access double socket, what we should have done is perhaps to create an opening for a hidden compartment in a similar fashion as our other double socket gourmet and hide this double socket inside the hidden compartment. A simpler alternative is to ensure that the roof is extended so that bulkier things could enter the compartment at an angle. This is one of the tiny details that got many of our followers interested when we shared it in our toweling episode. U channels are basically what holds our shower screen in place. The most common ones are those that simply drilled and siliconed into place. We didn't know about recessed U channels back then, and had we known about it beforehand, we would have definitely gone for it. If executed right, you will have a slick finishing and very minimal visible silicon. Here is how our old school U channels look like. You'll see that mole growth is quite fast and unsightly. From time to time, we will have to scrub off the red mold and the silicon it's sitting at. This is also how the top of the exposed U channel looks like. They didn't even bother plugging this big hole, which seems to go all the way through. Proxy grouting looks beautiful, and we also introduced its benefits in our past episodes. Now that we have lived in our home for about 10 months, we have some updates. Our vendor gave us complimentary epoxy grouting including those at the edges and corners, but warned us that they normally don't do the edges and corners as the epoxy has no cement or gap to grip onto and will almost definitely peel off over time, but we decided to experiment and see how long it could last. Indeed, they have all started to peel off, which is a shame because the edges look the best. Those that are often in contact with water and hot steam, such as shower area floors, are the ones that start to peel first. Thankfully, the drier areas like the kitchen wall and floor, bedroom floor, and bathroom walls have zero peeling as of today. Anyway, most of the time, epoxy grout peeling can be an indirect consequence of another vendor, your toweler. If there is bad leakage, this may contribute to ineffective epoxy grouting as well. All in all, our recommendation is still to go for epoxy grouting for everywhere except for bathroom floors, which you can consider coloured cement grout instead. Yeah, I maybe tell them don't bother epoxying the edges cause they will just peel off. One of our tallers apparently got fired by his supervisor midway through Reno, and a more senior taller was sent to rectify a few of his mistakes. Remember the wrong floor tiles used? Or this jigsaw puzzle around the water heater pipes? The senior taller saw our bathroom tiles, shook his head, and said the junior taller did a bad job with sloping the tiles, and told us that there will be ponding for sure. We guess this is what he meant. The water is not able to flow naturally to the floor traps. 
This is the common bath situation in ponds near the toilet bowl. Likewise for the master bath, it ponds here often whenever we step out of the shower. Honestly, we don't mind having steeper slopes. Sure, the aesthetics might be wacky, but at least it is practical, especially inside the shower area. So yes, do add sloping matters to the list of discussion points with your ID. This may be a surprise to many of you. If you have been following our IG, you'll probably remember that we face a lot of issues with our KDK Airy ceiling fans. This is unexpected especially since KDK has a good reputation for quality fans. Perhaps it's because it's their first foray to a so-called smart fan product. The first problem we had was a little pain to use the remote. Last time, we had to press like 20 times to turn it on. If we were lucky to turn it on, a high pitch sound is emitted whenever the lights are on. Anyway, KDK sent someone now to replace the remote and the motor. The new remote works and the high pitch sound indeed disappeared. A few weeks later, the other fan in the study starts to develop flu like symptoms. It gives off a mechanical wheezing sound whenever the blades are moving. Issues aside, we regret getting these fans because of how unsmart they are. The basic feature of Wi Fi remote control via the phone is flawed because the app will always lock you out. We just gave up on the app because it is silly to always have to log in and key in the password just to control your fan. Next, it inherently does not come with voice control, so you do need to do an extra step of getting an infrared or radio frequency blaster like Bond Home or Broadlink or a Tuya based one in order to achieve Google Voice Control. It took us some time to finally get it up and running. You'll recall our entire home is built on Samsung SmartThings and our ceiling fans are one of the few devices that we couldn't meaningfully onboard our smart home. Our SmartThings will not be able to tell when the device is on or off. It saves the app's own last use state, so even if the fan is physically off, it may still reflect as on. So our smart use of the fans is limited to just Google Voice Control, which is good enough, and also a SmartThings physical button, which simply put, is an extra remote lying around that allows us to program it to toggle on or off the fan for a single press and toggle on or off the light for a double press. This is helpful so that we don't have to walk around much to find the remote. Other than this, we won't be able to do any further rule-based automation, like if the temperature reaches X degrees Celsius, turn on the fan for 30 minutes. Because if the fan was already on, it will simply turn the fan off instead. We hope to replace these fans soon, ideally with fans that are metal and thus smart things compatible. So fan makers, please work on something smart. In the meantime, our regret is that we could have experimented with a Tuya compatible smart fan. Tuya compatibility with smart things is hit or miss, but at least we have a better shot than this KDK Airy.